Hello, I'm Philip Duncan. Thank you very much for joining us for our Climate Watch update for the month of June and our rainfall updates actually go out for the season of winter. And it's brought to you by our business partners at IBM and also ruralweather.co.nz. So let's get into it. We'll kick off with the big low that's been with New Zealand uh, since the end of May. Now finally moving away as we get to the start of June. It's pushing off New Zealand. That means those flooding rains which were affecting Canterbury are also now out at sea. So that system's going. We've got high pressure behind it. High number one is parked out here over the eastern side of Australia. High number two out here in the southern Indian Ocean slash Southern Ocean area about to move into the western side of Aussie. There's a small area of low pressure that is likely to actually make its way to New Zealand. We will show you that in a moment when we break everything down week by week. But for now, New Zealand does have a change for the first week of June as that big low rolls away. Westerly winds are about to come in and northerlies by this weekend. So let's take a look and see what's going on. We'll kick off with the soil temperatures. Obviously as the days get shorter, pasture growth uh, very much gets limited, but we're still seeing fairly mild conditions, especially in the north and the east. Obviously the eastern side of the North Island, it's not so much the temperature, it's the fact that it's so dry at the moment, missing out on most of that rain that's fallen this week. So that's a bit of an issue. This is 30 centimetres down by the way. Um, on the west coast of the South Island, that's where you're starting to see that blue showing up partially because of the southern out, so higher altitudes, but also the fact that the air is a little bit colder through this area, clearly affecting soil temperatures. Once you get into the blue area, that's when grass growth pretty much stops. So that's what we we're looking for in these maps. It's a little bit hard to read the key, I get that, but really you're just looking for the blue shading and the very, very uh, fine line where it goes greeny blue. Those are the areas where the pasture growth starts to stop. Starts to stop. Okay, let's get into the first week of June. Taking a look at the air pressure, as we do each month, we put high pressure in red boxes, low pressure in blue boxes, and it's just sort of a way to make it a little bit more simplistic, a little bit quicker to see what's going on. So as we kick off week one, you can see those two highs we were just talking about, high number one, high number two, and that weak little area of low pressure in the middle. Uh, around New Zealand, the huge area of low pressure finally moving away. So a bit of a transition over the next few days with this big high moving along and that low moving away. The Southern Ocean, pretty much bang on normal for this time of the year, low pressure down there. And there's actually low pressure also up here in the tropics with a low over there towards, um, actually towards Singapore. Right, week two. The highs are still there and they're still tracking towards New Zealand, but there is a bit of a change. They're moving further north. So they're not quite coming down over the southern part of New Zealand. They're sort of moving up into Australia and more towards our north. So that means we got more low pressure which can come up and into the country. So this map in week two is kind of interesting. It shows a lot of low pressure down here in the Southern Ocean also pushing in to the South Tasman Sea area. That could allow more rainmakers to move in. And on top of that, as that big area of high pressure east of New Zealand moves away, it pulls down the sort of moisture rich airflow. And so we might get that as early as the first weekend of June. Certainly at the start of next week, we'll be seeing uh, some of those rainmakers coming down here, as we say, week two of June. So could be a bit of northern rain as we kick off that second week. By the third week of June, another large area of low pressure moving into the New Zealand area. So this is all low pressure down here, and this is all low pressure up over New Zealand, and all low pressure to the north. The only area with high pressure, this one moving in around Western Australia, and the other one departing us, moving away from New Zealand. So what we're seeing in June is certainly a little bit more of an unsettled weather pattern. We're seeing more low pressure, and we're seeing the high pressure systems just not dominate quite as much as they've done over the last year or two or even three. So that is some good news, but the downside is that places like Hawke's Bay are still not getting the rain they need. This is the departure from normal over the next uh, week, the first week of June. We're gonna get into some rainfall totals for you now. But we kick off with one week of uh, rainfall, and what this shows you, if I just move over here actually, red shows you drier than average. So for Canterbury, very, very good news. You'll be happy to see that showing up for the next seven days, the first week of June, leaning drier than average. But likewise, Hawke's Bay, probably not enjoying that so much. Another week below average, drought conditions continue on. But you can see that northerly flow with the subtropical rain possible 
uh, over the weekend or early next week. Um, that's, as I say, the first weekend of June and the start of week two of June. And that's where we're likely to see a bit of rain coming into the north of New Zealand. And that might make things lean a little bit wetter than average. So this is the first week of rainfall around the New Zealand and Australia areas. I put into white boxes the areas that are not likely to get much rain. Um, and the good news here, Canterbury, one of those areas. So that's very good news. Canterbury's not likely to get a lot of rain over the next week. You're talking about just one to five millimetres. That's excluding some of those showers falling for today, the very first of June as we record this. Uh, that dry weather though also continues up to Hawke's Bay. So that's the downside. You're looking at a maximum of 10 millimetres. It's a little bit it's certainly not enough, but you can see these bigger downpours further to the north of New Zealand. That's where you're getting up to 60 to maybe, maybe 100 millimetres, but I think that's going to be fairly isolated. Let's go into week two. This is the first two weeks, sorry, I should say of June, two weeks worth of rainfall in this map. And what it shows you again, dry conditions for the first half of June around the eastern side of the South Island. So again, that's good news for those that are trying to clean up after the floods, repairing the bridge in Ashburton, things like that. But the downside is it's dry around Hawke's Bay. And actually another downside actually even for, for Canterbury, some rain would be good to wash the silt away. It's always good to get a bit of rain after a flood, not a huge amount, but just enough to kind of clean things. And this is not really the forecast for it. But look at the rainfall totals over on the western side. 200 millimetres, maybe more than that. And this is interesting, 60 to 100 millimetres up here. Now the 100 is in that little blue zone just there. So, you know, the update tomorrow might not show that. But as we recorded this, it is showing, generally speaking, a line of heavier rain that is brought in by that humid nor'easter that we do expect to come through. So fairly normal weather, I guess, for this time of the year, but uh, some helpful stuff in there, but also, as I say, for Hawke's Bay, not so great. And this is another one that may not be so great for Hawke's Bay, and I'm sorry to be so negative, but I'm trying to look for silver linings. There are a few showers in there. It's not 100% dry. But when we look at the precipitation, departure from normal, this is not just for June, but June, July, August, or in other words, winter. And it shows Hawke's Bay leaning drier than average. So that's a little bit unfortunate. It's not a huge amount drier than average. In fact, it's leaning only around about 12 to 20 millimeters below normal. So that means you might still get a bit of rain. It's just not going to be a huge amount, especially the further east and south you are in that region. Uh, more rain likely to come back through the South Island and rain coming back to Northern New Zealand. I think those areas could be fairly positive as long as the rain that falls in the South Island isn't too much. And Southland potentially leaning drier than average as well over the next few months, which actually is very similar to the pattern you've been having. Temperatures departure from normal again, June, July, August, nothing too extreme showing up. You know, we've had an uptick in southerlies in May and we've had a bit of a southerly start to June. But overall, we're actually only a little bit warmer than average. It's not hugely warmer than average and it's not colder than average, at least not based on the IBM forecast for the next three months. Now there will easily be some very cold days in there, um, the minus sixes and sevens as we've just seen in May. But overall, I think there'll be some warmer nights in there as well to kind of balance it all. So it leans a little bit above zero, a little bit above that for departure from normal. So nothing too extreme at this stage. And speaking of extremes, well, we're pretty much in the neutral zone at the moment anyway. Our um, Enzo outlook inactive. This is to deal with La Nina and El Nino, brought to us by the Australian Government Bureau of Meteorology. And here is their uh, outlook for La Nina in particular. So June, July, and oh, sorry, June, August and October, the La Nina, which we've just had, um, it's in neutral for all of those months. Uh, so we're not really seeing any swing back to La Nina, although maybe a little bit into October, it's sort of pulling a wee bit away from neutral. But hey, look, pretty much 2021 is a neutral year. And what that means for us in New Zealand is that anything can happen. It's a bit chaotic. We're not really driven by one um, air sort of pressure system, if you like. So that's good news. It's more variety. So before I go, I just want to double check ruralweather.co.nz. Please go on there because if you're a farmer and grower, it's got basically all the answers to the questions you've got. Let me just show you very, very quickly Ashburton. Um, so look, you can see it's drying out, but then the rain comes back this weekend. So if you need to know what the rainfall numbers are, you can just hover the mouse along that ruralweather.co.nz. But if you need more details, 
scroll down the page you'll see the brief outlook so nice clean sort of outlook for the next 10 days and that also includes rainfall totals at the bottom so if you were curious about this saturday and the rainfall totals in ashburton you click on that on the uh, daily data area and now you can see saturday's rainfall in detail for you showing the percentage of rain the totals of rain and the timing of that rain and this is for Ashburton this coming weekend showing actually just a, a good bit of rain coming through enough to clean the grass but not enough to cause any floods we hope so this is how you kind of use rural weather it's got a lot of detail in there and it's all specific to your local area and that is all from me well wow, June is here we're halfway through the year already which is crazy but I'll be back again as we get to July with the outlook for that month until then take care